Alrighty guys, and welcome back to another LEGO set review from Brick by Brick. And today we have the very, very cool 2015 Titan Mech Battle, set number 70737, you can kind of see over here. And um, it includes, it retails for $59.99, and um, includes five minifigures, and 754 pieces, which is pretty good price per piece. I mean, you know. And then, it also includes this guy, who you might consider a minifigure, you might not, I mean, he's a screamer, he's a character, another character to add to the ghost's side, really. So, anyway, we'll start off with the minifigures, and we'll start off with the first old figure from the previous wave, really. This is not exclusive, there is... One, no, two figures actually exclusive to this set. So I should have said there are, but you know. So Nia, first side of her face is a very normal face print. It's, um, this is the same uh, minifigures featured in the Ninja DBX from the last wave, as well as the Lego Dimensions, um, Nia Fun Pack, and also, um, City of Sticks. So, you know. I'm gonna take off her headpiece. To show you the torso print, there's the front and leg print on her, and she does have back printing on her torso, and the only difference between this figure and the one in the um, Dimensions Fun Pack and Ninja DBX is that this one has black shoulder pads. Um, the one in City of Sticks does have black shoulder pads too, but I mean that doesn't really make it um, a not exclusive figure like, like that doesn't make her an exclusive figure because those parts are actually rather common in this wave especially um, and for her weapons she just has two swords Jay on the other hand um, has his nunchucks which are pretty nice with the golden chain and black handles um, and deep stone um, Jay appears in several sets he appears in the um, his Jaywalker one, this set, um, the Attack of the Moro Dragon, City of Sticks, Temple of Ejitsu, um, that's at least five sets, I think. Um, but his, he's a very, very cool figure. I really like the Deep Stone suits, they're probably my favorite ninja suits, and I'm sure a lot of you would agree. He does have the normal face, which is, okay, I can't wait until I get Misfortune's Keep with Jay's new face. But there is the torso and leg printing. Um, you can see the kind of symbol in the middle. Um, and there's the back printing on there with his elemental symbol. Um, and he does have the black shoulder pads, just like Nia. Um, and his mask is really, really cool. It's got the dual molded um, look to it with the blue bands going around the black mask otherwise. And um, the thing I like about these suits is that they kind of bring it back to more ninja-y than elemental powers, kind of, because of the fact that they um, are more black. And um, third up is the one of the two exclusive figures in the set, and that is Zane, um, and he's actually not really exclusive. He's... Um, I mean, I guess he does appear in the Temple of Rejitsu, but in the normal smaller sets, he's exclusive um, to this one. So he is the rarest of all of the... Well, he's one of the rarest of all the ninja. Um, but he's very cool. So I guess I shouldn't have said exclusive, which brings us down to one exclusive figure, which you'll see in a minute. But he does have the same face print as the last Titanium Ninja. But um, his suit's pretty cool because you can see he's got kind of the silver um, silver details and a little bit of light blue in there. There's the back printing on him. And he does have black shoulder pads still. And I like his mask, the black and white. It just looks pretty cool, honestly. And he doesn't have any weapons because he gets a whole mech in this set. I'll put him over there. Take a look at Gultar next. Gultar is quite the cool figure too. Um, he's got the scythe 
with the new ghost blade piece, which looks pretty cool. And the scythe um, fits nicely with uh, his figure size, because he's taller than a normal minifigure, as you can see, by quite a bit. And here's the new ghost tail piece, which, whoopsies, um, is very cool. I really like the way these ghost tail pieces look from the back. You can't really see it perfectly in the camera, um, but it does look very cool. I like his purple rice hat, obviously. Um, and then he's got this kind of skull printing on the transparent head, or translucent head, I should say. And he has a dark blue ninja mask piece that um, kind of covers it up. He also gets the uh, ghost shoulder armor piece um, in blue, and it only comes in blue and green. And they're both dual molded. One's green and black, and the other's blue and gunmetal gray. And his torso print is pretty skeletal as well. Um, it's kind of got like the ghost symbol on the back almost. And um, that's it for Gultar. He comes in quite a few sets. Um, he's the most common of the ghost generals, I think. The ghost generals being um, Wraith, Gultar, Soul Archer, the rarest, and um, Moro and Bansha. So there's Gultar. Take a look at the Screamer next and end off with the exclusive figure. The Screamer is the same as in most other sets. He's got the big and wide mouth. And he does come with two of these nice ghost colored swords, really. And then, very cool. Um, I like the way his face looks. And he is a nice piece. Um, I'm just going to take Jay for a second and show you that he can fit onto a minifigure head, which looks kind of funny, but, I mean, it, it can be done. And um, also, if you have a clear minifigure head, that's a good way to kind of display him. And last up, we have Bansha, and um, Bansha's weapon, she's the Blade Master, so she just comes with this ghost sword, kind of. And um, I'm going to have to grab another ghost to get her head off, because her head sticks inside that mask. Um, really well and doesn't come out. So I'm going to grab Cowler for my little Cowler Dragon poly bag because that's, um, I don't know, it just works. Like, that's the best way that I have found to get her head out of there to show you. And now, this is what her face print looks like. Um, you can see it's kind of got this cool, kind of white um, paint all over it, somewhat. And she does have the two kind of angry looking eyes there. Um, I'll just put it back on here. And maybe it'll focus up. There we go. You can kind of see there. It is nice and transparent. I'll show you again what it looks like with the mask on. But the mask is quite cool. It does have the transparent back to it. And it is dual molded. Two colors. Which is always nice. They do a lot of dual molding with the uh, ghost sets, because this is also dual molded. This um, shoulder armor piece, which is the same as Gultar's, so we're not going to look at it too long. Um, and her torso print is the same as the other versions of Bansha. Her leg print, though, is exclusive. This is the only version of Bansha with legs. You can see her back print and front print on her torso. It's quite cool still. Um, I would have preferred to get her with a ghost tail piece, probably. Um, and hopefully I will if I get the uh, final flight of Destiny's Bounty, which is the next it's like the one set from the ghost wave that i'm aiming to go back and get really um 100 percent. i would also like to get the master Wu dragon the uh other three sets i don't care as much about but now that we have taken a look at all the figures we'll start off with the samurai cave little backdrops um the first one here it got like this little uh rock formation and um, let's actually turn the camera down it's got the little rock formation, there's a nice little sticker there um, this is a printed console piece and then in the center you can see we got this arrow blade here which is Zane's arrow blade and um, you know it's kinda cool um, probably one of the least rare of the arrow blades because the tooth pieces are very common in this color so if you just got another one you could easily replace the um the tooth pieces um i do like these two little pieces they use for detail on the rock though 
And now we've got the little um, harpoon gun almost. And uh, Sneeze's little gadget in the samurai cave, obviously. Um, you can see we got this nice little sticker piece there. And it's got kind of a targeting system in the back. Um, I'm not really sure what that's supposed to be on there, but, you know. And, uh, it does have this little box here, which, um, you could put weapons and stuff in, like Jay's nunchucks, or whatever. It's on this, um, like, 6x6 six six plate, I think, if I can count correctly. And, um, there's one other sticker here that you probably saw, but I forgot to mention. And, um, basically, you put all the string in this little box... And then, it does come with an extra one of these harpoons, I don't have it up here, because I put it in my extra pieces box, but, you know. And then, um, you can take this, and it works like a spring-loaded missile, but it's on its side, so you have to push it to the side, and then it will shoot out, and it can, like, the point is, it would grab onto the mech, and then you could, um, pull it back down, like that, or something like that. You know, that's kind of the goal of this little device. And it is a pretty cool feature. I mean, we've never seen anything really like this in a Ninjago set. So, it is pretty nice. At least I don't remember seeing a feature like this. I'm just going to put the string like that. Because <laughs> um, I don't want to waste too much of your time. But um, now we will start off by taking a look at Zane's Mac. And we're going to move the box out of the way just so that we can kind of see it a little bit more clearly. And, um, here is Zane's mech. While we're looking downwards, we'll take a look at his legs. Um, his legs, you can see, have a couple of these stickers, four of these stickers in total. These ones move around quite a bit, which I'm not the biggest fan of, because I would like it if they stayed in the same position. But, um, his feet are pretty cool. They're, this is actually a quite sturdy mech. Um, can't lean back that much, but, you know, it can lean quite far forward. And um, also on his feet, you'll notice these two sticker pieces. They're very cool. I like the way they do that um, to give the feet some more detail. They got another similar one on the other side. And other than that, his legs are kind of simple. Um, I do like this um, use of that piece there. And especially like uh, the roof corner piece used um, with that to make kind of like a gray triangle. I think that looks pretty cool. And I do like these two stickers here with the three circles. Kind of cool. Um, but they're obviously with the ratcheted joints and uh, can move back and forth like that. And then um, there's this little small piece in here which uses the little tooth pieces just to give it some more detail. And that piece um, is separate basically from the rest of the body of the mech. Um, but it, it's that's how it kind of turns around which obviously is pretty cool and pretty important for mech to do. Um, the head, if I can get up on that level, actually let's extend the tripod. All right, now we can see quite well. Um, the head is, uh, the mech is pretty cool. It's got these two stickers on the flags on the two sides with, uh, I think that's Zane's symbol, but I'm not certain. And it's kind of got the eye there with this little tooth piece kind of being the front. Um, and it does have this one sword sticking off the back of his head, which is pretty cool. And it um, has two little joints to move out of the way so you can get Zane in there. It's got the first one here, and then this one uses some bucket handles to decorate the mech, which is pretty cool. Zane's mech has a ton of golden bucket handles on it, by the way, <laughs> which is kind of funny. I don't like how this piece had to be tan, though. Uh, not a big fan of that. And um, we'll take a look at the little chest section of the mech uh, real quick. Um, you can see... Uh, this sticker down here says Zane 2.0. That's actually really accurate. I was watching um, episode 54 the other day and noticed that actually on his shoulder. And then this little detail too, I think, was also there. But I'm not certain about that. And he's got the two stud shooters um, on his shoulders, which I think are supposed to represent shooting these little uh, shoulder cannons here, which is a nice use of this uh, piece with the groove in it. And it is in sand blue, which is a nice color to get. And um, Zane fits in there quite well. You can see there is a little window piece in, like, trans blue. And um, that is to allow Zane to fit in there with his shoulder pads on, which is always nice when you can get their mech to 
fit them without having to adjust them. Like for example, Kai um, Kai KX, like his mech, um, he doesn't come with shoulder pads in this set because none of them came with shoulder pads. But I put shoulder pads on all of them, so it is kind of annoying to have to take off the shoulder pads to put him in his mech. Really, you can kind of fit him in there, but not very well. And um, his arms have one ball joint, which is a little weird, but then this uh, rotates back and forth, so that kind of makes it a little bit better. He does have bucket handles again, um, and he has these spinner crowns, which you can spin around, make them look kind of cool. And his hands um, are kind of normal, you know, kind of generic. He does have this one little, um, this little uh, shuriken on his arm and then he has this uh, sword blade here which he can use to attack things like you know but um, he doesn't have any really big swords which is a little bit disappointing and um, the other arm is basically exactly the same which is kinda odd but um, these two things I mean you could assume that they're like shooters or um, I mean like a jetpack kinda similar to the way Nia's mech is um, but the rest of the mech from the back is pretty plain which Again, I don't know if I like. And also, you can use these two studs here as um, as extra ammo for the stud shooters. And now, moving on to the ghost mech, which is a bit larger. Um, you can see, we'll start off with the legs. Go from the bottom up. The feet are very similar to the samurai mech, which is... Uh, makes sense because this actually is the Samurai Mech, just possessed. I do like these pieces, I don't know what they're from, but they use them on both sides, the legs. And we got this uh, gear up there, which actually I think is also similar to the Samurai Mech. It has a gear-like piece, not exactly a gear though. Um, I just turned around, that's probably why you couldn't hear me for a second. Um, it's got these, um, this little kind of skirt kind of piece with a sticker on it. It's got one on both sides, as you can see there. And this flips up, you know, kind of covers the bottom there, give, gives a little bit more detail. They use some of these nice bar pieces in this um, transparent green-ish color to allow the mech to kind of... Um, to allow these things on there, and it does have four arms, which is pretty cool. I'm just going to show you two of them, cause two of them in detail, because the other ones are basically the same, just mirrored. Um, this one has a nice little sticker on the bottom, and it only has three fingers. This one has four fingers, which you know the fingers don't really do anything, cause the swords are held in there with um, these pieces, kind of the Technic pieces. I do like the swords a lot, though. Um, this is a nice color for them, and uh, the other ones. Basically exactly the same. I believe that's even an identical sticker and everything. And um, the cockpit is a little bit interesting. Um, you can fit Bancha in there, standing up. I'm going to show you. There's two studs down at the bottom. That's where you fit her on. And I do like the uh, use of like the spider arm pieces. I think that's what they're usually used for. Um, to be kind of like a rib cage almost, of the mech. And you got these other two little bone pieces sticking out there. Um, and also, these little shoulder pieces, shoulder blades kind of have these sticker pieces there. And they're very similar to the Samurai Mech. It definitely reminds you of the Samurai Mech. And you got another sticker on that side. And up in the front, you got this cool little spider with the two wings. And um, no sticker up on this piece here, but it looks like there might be one. There, Like there could have been one. And then you got this flag with that um, sticker on it. And the other side has two stickers that split in two with, uh, you know, the underside tile pieces. So, all in all, this is a great set. Honestly, um, $60 is a really great value for two max five figures. It would have been great if there was a six figure, but honestly, if there was a six figure, you could have, like, Lego could have easily pulled this off as a $70 set. But, you know, they gave it to us for 60 which is pretty good. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please rate, comment, and subscribe if you did. Uh, have a fan fantastic day, and I'll see you guys all next time with another LEGO review. i got to wrap this up quick because my camera's running out of battery. But anyway, 
I'll see you guys all next time. This is a great set. Would definitely recommend it. And you also get that cool Zane figure. This is the cheapest way to get him. And um, he's somewhat exclusive. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys all next time. Have a fan-flippin'-tastic day. Bye, guys.